Welcome to another Forcepoint Tech Talk episode. In this video, we will go through a demo of the Forcepoint Email Security Hybrid Solution. The primary function of any email security system is to prevent inbound spam and viruses, but typically includes added functionality to monitor for sensitive data leaving the network via an email. As always, please like and subscribe and leave us a comment below if you have any questions or ideas for another video. Enjoy! The Forcepoint Email Security Hybrid Solution provides best-in-class email security and enterprise-grade data loss prevention through one integrated solution. The hybrid solution uses Forcepoint's cloud service as an inbound pre-filter to improve spam and virus detection exponentially. Along with the improved cloud efficacy, the hybrid integration provides a phishing education feature as well as allows for the use of the Forcepoint Advanced Malware Detection feature for zero-day threat protection. On top of the cloud's capabilities, the hybrid is deployed on-premise to take advantage of the Forcepoint DLP network for email protections. This seamless integration allows for the use of all predefined policies such as PCI, PHI, PII, HIPAA, GDPR, etc., as well as the ability to use file and database fingerprinting to protect any custom data or intellectual property. There's a lot of ground to cover within a hybrid email security demo, but for the sake of time, I will highlight the primary protection capabilities of the solution. If you have any specific questions, please feel free to leave a comment below. If you would like to have a personalized deep dive demo, then check out the resources below for the schedule a demo link. I will break this demo into two parts. So the first part, which we'll go through today, is going to primarily focus on the email security capabilities. And in the next video, we'll cover the DLP network for email capabilities. So let's get started with the deployment. The Forcepoint Email Security Hybrid Solution is an on-premise deployment with features that extend into the Forcepoint cloud service. The minimum server requirements to run this solution are two Windows servers, one to run the management server and another to run SQL and store logs, both of which can be virtualized. The other required component is at least one email appliance which comes in one of three sizes of physical appliances or can be virtualized on VMware. Another key aspect of the deployment is what the mail flow looks like. You should see an example mail flow diagram on the screen now. As mentioned earlier, the cloud acts as an inbound pre-filter for spam and virus emails to improve overall protection efficacy. To get this higher level of efficacy, the cloud must receive the emails first. As you can see in the diagram, for an inbound email, the MX record for the domain points to the Forcepoint cloud. The Forcepoint cloud performs spam, virus, and zero-day threat checks against the email's header, body, and attachments. If the email is found to be malicious, then it is sent to the on-premise appliances and quarantined locally on the appliance. This is a key point here. If the email is malicious, it is not stored in the cloud. It is quarantined on the on-premise appliance. If the email is determined to be clean, it is sent to the on-premise appliances as well. Once the email is received by the on-premise appliance, it is filtered against any of the custom policies that are configured by the administrators. Once the filtering has been completed by the email security solution, it is sent to the configured exchange server and delivered to the recipient. For outbound mail flow, the mail is sent to the exchange server, then to the email appliance where the mail is scanned for spam, viruses, and or sensitive data that matches the DLP policies. Once the mail has been marked clean, then it is sent out to the internet for delivery to the recipient. Now that we have covered the deployment and mail flow for this solution, let's dive into more detail around the inbound spam and virus protection, and then we can go into the outbound DLP controls. As I mentioned before, the spam and virus filtering are initially performed in the Forcepoint cloud. Specifically looking into the spam filtering, the system analyzes connection information, email header information, and email content. To level set knowledge, when an email is sent, there is a two-step process that is performed. The first step is for the sending mail server to establish a connection with the receiving mail server. Then the second step is to send the message across that connection. There are different controls for the connection and the message. When the connection is made, the email security solution receives information such as the sender's IP address and domain name. The sender's IP address is checked against a real-time blacklist, which are public lists of known bad or spam senders. If the sender's IP address matches an IP address on this list, then the connection is blocked. The connection attempt also provides the sender's domain, which is used to perform a reverse DNS lookup and check the sender's SPF record. 
The reverse DNS lookup determines if the sender's IP address resolves to the domain address that is being presented in the connection. While the SPF record determines if the IP address is an allowed source for the domain's emails. If either of these two checks fail or returns errors, then the system can be configured to block the connection. If the connection passes these checks, then the connection is opened and the message, which is step two, is sent through. Now that the message has been received by the email appliance, other controls that analyze the message body and header can be applied. When the message is received, it is analyzed by the default inbound rules and any custom rules that are configured. The first rule that is applied is the virus rule, which evaluates the message body, attachments, and header looking for malicious content. If a threat is detected, then the email is quarantined. The email attachment rule can be configured as a block all for specific file types. For example, if an organization wants to block all inbound EXEs, regardless of whether it contains a virus, it can do so. The anti-spoofing rule is a very important rule to protect your users from phishing emails. Spoofed emails appear to be from one person, but are sent from someone else. Seems straightforward, but this is one of the primary methods that malicious actors use to steal important information from unsuspecting victims. To level set knowledge again, the header of an email is essentially the backend details such as the path it took to get to you, who sent it, what their IP was, etc. This information is not presented in the quote unquote user-friendly interface. The anti-spoofing rule looks at the email header and determines whether there is a conflict between three different fields. The from address, who the user sees the messages from, the envelope sender, the true sender of the message, and the reply to, who the message is going to be sent back to when the user hits reply. If either of these three do not match, then the system considers the message to be spoofed. The default action is to apply a tag to the subject of the email with the words possibly spoofed, but this action can be changed to quarantine if desired. There are some situations where these three fields do not match, but the message is legitimate, as in the case when a valid third-party system such as Salesforce or Workday sends an email on behalf of the domain. If this is the case, then ideally the organization's SPF record has been updated to reflect the valid sender, but if not, then an exception can be made within the rule. The URL analysis rule allows the organization to use the Forcepoint Web Security's list of URL categories to block or modify messages that contain URLs that fall into those categories. For example, this could be used to block emails that contain gambling or shopping URLs. The anti-spam rule is another major tool to protect against spam. This rule uses digital fingerprinting analysis, Lexi rules, and heuristics to analyze word combinations and patterns within the message body to determine if they are similar to known spam samples or have characteristics similar to known spam. Each characteristic found during the analysis attributes to an overall spam score that is used to apply an action to the email. By default, if the spam score is over six, then the message will be quarantined. As I mentioned during the intro, the hybrid integration provides a higher level of efficacy and opens the phishing education and advanced malware detection features. The advanced file analysis rule is the name for the advanced malware detection or file sandboxing feature that is used to protect from zero day threats. This feature is an add on to the base subscription, but provides best in class zero day threat protection through our partner Lastline, who is an industry leader for sandboxing technology. This feature triggers when suspicious attachments are received. This rule sends the suspicious attachment to the sandbox environment, detonates the file, and then provides a positive or negative response as to the maliciousness of the file. If the sandbox finds that the file is malicious, then it is quarantined and a report is sent to the administrator with the details about the threat. The other feature that is available with the hybrid deployment is phishing education. This feature is included with the subscription of the hybrid licensing. This feature works similar to other tools like No Before and tries to test if the user will open potentially malicious emails. When the phishing education feature is enabled, the system will, quote, defang, unquote, the malicious URLs contained within the email and then deliver the email to the user. When the user then clicks on the URLs within the email, effectively being fooled by the phishing attempt, they are taken to a block page which is similar to a Forcepoint web security block page. This block page informs the user that the original message was a phishing email and then provides details to better educate the user around what to look out for 
when opening emails and clicking links. I think that this is a good place to stop for this video. So far, what we have discussed are the inbound protections that the Forcepoint Email Security Hybrid solution has to offer. In the next video, I will go into detail around the DLP network for email capabilities, which is a whole nother can of worms. It is important to understand the DLP capabilities because it is included with the Forcepoint Email Security Hybrid licensing and is a major competitive advantage for this solution. Thanks for watching this video, where we were able to go through part one of a high level demo of the Forcepoint Email Security Hybrid solution. Keep an eye out for next week's video to see part two, where we will cover the DLP network for email capabilities that are included with this licensing. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments section below. And don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to show your support for this channel. See you next time.